it's Heather Moxie and I am back. I just finished my first week of school, the first week of the quarter, and this is just my look now, so get used to seeing the glasses. I apologize for the lighting, but this is what I'm working with, and um, I've seen some videos recently where some people use like um, the, I don't know how to explain it, it's like construction lighting, and I'm seriously considering getting that because I can hook it to the bookcase that's behind this camera, and then I don't have to worry about like directly over my face lighting. So. Probably gonna be into that. Shout out to Quiggin for that. That was really awesome news or really awesome tips. So in today's video, you're gonna be learning how to do a simple corkboard project, how to spruce it up, how to make it look just a little bit better so it's not just plain corkboard. And it's really awesome because it's super cheap, super simple, and it can be even cheaper than it already is if you use coupons. So let's get started. You're gonna need your corkboard, some fabric, push pins, a hot glue gun, and a ruler just to help with alignment. Go ahead and clear off your workspace. I just went ahead and used my dining table because it's the biggest work area that I have in my house. And I just like to make sure that in the background I have my hot glue gun ready to go. Now with this project, it's really great because you can use any type of fabric that you want. I went ahead and used burlap just because it matches the theme that I'm going with. And it matches my style just a little bit better than any other fabric. Now this is a two yard roll of burlap. You're not gonna need that much at all. I just went ahead and bought it because I figured I love burlap, I love the style, so it would match with whatever projects I may do in the future. For measurements, you're gonna wanna cut just a little bit over your cork board. Now, this is folded, so I ended up cutting probably twice the size of what I needed, but I ended up doubling it up in a way. There are two different ways that you can do this project, so you can either fold it and double up the fabric or leave it as one single piece of fabric. It really isn't gonna affect the outcome of the project at all. Either way, you want to make sure that you have enough fabric so that it can fold over the edge of your corkboard. You're going to be hot gluing it to the corkboard just in lieu of a staple gun. I don't own a staple gun and I don't know if very many people do, so I ended up just hot gluing it, which worked just as well. Once you're sure your edges are good, you're going to want to decide if you want to iron your fabric. I ended up ironing my fabric just to soften up some of the folds. Depending on the type of fabric you're using, you definitely want to consider ironing it just because if it's a pattern fabric, it might be a little harsh. Burlap, you can kind of go with the wrinkly look, but my lines were really harsh, so I wanted to make sure that they were softened. And now you can move on to the push pins. For this part of the project, it is a little tedious, but it comes out pretty well no matter how specific you get. You don't have to worry if your lines are really straight, the ruler is going to help you with that. I just made sure that my first corner was taken care of with a push pin and then I worked out from there. Some of the corners I put both ends in and then worked in, into the middle. The only problem with that is depending on what type of push pin you're working with, they might not line up evenly so you might have to go back and redo it. And just like any type of fabric you can use with this, you can use any style of push pin. There are so many types of push pins out there, especially at stores like Target. I got simple metal flathead looking push pins just because it was a simple DIY with a very rustic vibe to it. I didn't want to go with anything fancy, but I do know they make like diamond push pins, they make colorful push pins, they make all kinds. So this project can be modified for any style that you're looking for in any area of your home. As you place your push pins, just make sure that they're going flat onto the corkboard and they're not hitting the frame of the corkboard. With my fabric, it was a little difficult to see where they were landing, so a lot of them I had to pick up and realign. But just make sure they're going flat onto the corkboard and they're not hitting the frame so that they won't come off or, you know, they won't fall off. And this is basically where all of the work comes in for this project. For push pins, I ended up using two of these boxes of push pins, and I think 105 or 150 come in them, so you're going to be using a lot of push pins. For this version of the project, I only had the one box of push pins on hand, so that's where the doily came into play. I am obsessed with doilies. All of my friends think I'm a grandmother, but that's okay because I don't care. I love doilies. So after I flipped it around and just made sure that they're all in place, all the push pins are ready to go, that's when you're going to start using your hot glue gun. Just fold your fabric over and pull it tightly enough that you won't have any slack in the fabric on the front side, but don't pull your push pins out because that would 
you're gonna have to start over on all of that hard work you just did. So continue doing that and just make sure that when you touch the hot glue, even though it's beneath the fabric, it will still be hot. <laughs> so don't do what I did and touch it immediately after because you're gonna get that on your fingers and it's not gonna necessarily burn, but it's not cold either, so just be very careful. As you fold over your fabric, your corners are gonna bunch up like that. Don't worry about that. Don't even bother putting hot glue on the corners. You're just gonna snip straight across and then once you're left with the fabric, just go in and touch up any loose ends. You can choose to cut them off. My scissors were a little too big, so I just glued down anything that may get in the way between the corkboard and the wall and cause it to hang weird. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and flip it over and that corner there is where I ran out of push pins, but that's okay because I have my trusted doily that I love and everybody else hates. <laughs> um, I went ahead and placed it there just to kind of cover up that empty space and also it acted as an accent because I don't know if you can tell, I do have tan walls and burlap on tan isn't the greatest match because it's basically the same color, so the doily kind of helps it stand out aside from the push pins. So I just added some hot glue into the little corners, just enough to hold it down. I didn't want to be able to see the glue from the other side or else I would have went crazy with the glue. But now that everything's in place, you can flip it over and just feel around for the little holes um, on the back side. Those holes are where you're going to hang it on the wall and obviously there's fabric covering it. Depending on what fabric you use or how much fabric you use, this part will be very simple. You're going to want to use your scissors and poke through the fabric and just reveal those holes just enough to where you can mount it on the wall without it falling off. And here's the finished product you guys. This was one of the easiest DIYs I've ever done and I may have not filmed all of my projects but I've done a lot of projects and this one was awesome because it's super simple, super easy and if I ever want to change it in the future I can. You just pull it right off because it's only hot glued. That was another great benefit of not using a staple gun. So in the end I opted for the version without my trusted doily. I love my doilies but I figured either way it's pretty cute. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. If you do this project, Tweet me at Heather Moxie DIY and thanks for watching. Bye!